Hello everybody and welcome back to Nerdly Out Loud, the official channel of nerdly.co.uk, your favourite British home for the news, reviews and exclusive interviews. We like to cover everything from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget. And as you can see, I'm in sort of an impromptu location right now. And that's because I'm having some technical difficulties and some gremlins with my equipment. I've got some new stuff and it's not exactly working out for me so here I am talking to you from my living room. Uh, tonight we are talking to an awesome awesome Brit director that I've been speaking to for years now. I've been reviewing his movies, we've talking, we've spoken countless times on podcast episodes, my old podcast, my, my other podcast 365 Flicks podcast, Tom has been on that countless times and we have spoken about his projects. Um, I've had a few set visits to Tom's movies, um, it's just one of those directors that I absolutely, absolutely adore and I'll constantly try and push anything he is working on. And this time around he um, is bringing us an action movie called 400 Bullets, his first all out action. He's done action before but this is the first time he is really going for it with the action stakes with fantastic actors like Jean-Paul Lee up and coming um, actor. He's just phenomenal, great with the punch kicky stuff and just works in a Tom Payton movie. Um, he's playing alongside Andrew Lee Potts who if you are British, even if you're not British, you know like massive cult following for Andrew Lee Potts, what an actor he's become. So that is cool as well. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, again, since the days of Pandorica, which was Tom's first movie, we've championed him. He is a fantastic, fantastic director. We absolutely love everything he does. His whole team, his whole ethos, his whole work, his, his work rate is just phenomenal. Like five or six years and they've made about eight movies. Frequent collaborator, DOP partner, um, George Burt, wow, just a great eye that man has. And then on the music, you've got the likes of Max Sweary, who's always doing uh, Tom scores. And just, I still listen to the Pandorica soundtrack to this day. Um, they've picked people up along the way and people have left along the way, but their core group of people is, tends to be the same, tends to be the same. And we, and we love that. We love that. It's why we champion them. Uh, Brit cinema right now is on a bubble. It's, it's, it's big, it's great, they're doing, there are some amazing projects out there. I mean, look at Rise of the Foot Soldier, the new one, is, it's the fifth movie of the franchise. And personally, I think it's the best addition to the franchise. Like, I love it. Uh, British cinema right now is unbelievable. The independents are doing some brilliant things. And Tom is, for me, um, along with the likes of James Kermack, the director of Knuckle Dust, at the forefront of all of it. They're both, these guys are the, the linchpins right now for me personally. That's my opinion. It's not it's not anyone else's, it's mine. Um, but yeah, Please Do All is one of the full amazing things. I am being a little bit quiet because all my girls are in bed. So if that's annoying you, then I do apologise. But Please Do All is amazing things that help channels like this um, survive and thrive and uh, please do hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell the notification bell will let you know whenever i drop a new episode whether it's a review interview anything like that and um, just to give you a heads up i did a review of episode one of heels the new stars tv show Stephen Amell. i won't be covering that because episode two is pants that's all i'm gonna say so i have dropped that show <laughs> didn't last long. Um, but yeah, I will also explain there are, I mentioned technical gremlins at the start of this intro. There were a few during the interview. The interview is about 40 minutes long. Tom's camera is wonderful. He looks fantastic. He looks every bit the rock star that he is. However, mine was a little bit dodgy and it kept glitching, which is a shame because I really, really enjoyed this interview. Please do stick with it. I've done some creative stuff to kind of get around it. It is a little bit annoying, but please do stick with the interview because the conversation is fantastic. We kind of get a little bit personal as to Tom making this movie and why he made this movie and some of the background stuff that you maybe wouldn't have known. So that was cool. Really, really like that. 
yeah, just stick with it, please do. Um, I don't think it's a deal breaker. It's a really good interview. It's a really good chat. It always is with Tom, and he will be back to talk about his next movie, which is in the can and doing very well. It is about to be released. I hear uh, the assailant. It's called stars Casper Van Dien, Tom's second Casper Van Dien movie after G Lock, which I loved again. Um, so yeah, please do just check out 400 Bullets. It's on streaming sites everywhere, Amazon Prime, I believe you can get on Sky, the Sky Store, all that good stuff. Please do check out the movie, Andrew Potts, John Paul Lee, two absolute legends in their field. So I'm going to go, because this is weird, sitting in my living room and doing this. So I'm going to go, I'm going to let you all watch the interview, and honestly, it's about time that we had Tom Payne on Nerdly Out Loud. That was, that was my thing. I had to have him on. So now he's on. And we love Tom. We will champion his movies. We will push them to the moon. And it really helps that they are actually really good. So, yes, please do all those amazing things. Like, comment, subscribe, share, everything. Let people know about Nerdly Out Loud. Let people know about 400 Bullets. Interview in progress. I'll be back in the studio next time, I promise. I'll sort all this out. It's a bit weird. It's a bit jarring. Yeah. Any of your progress. There's no need for any more violence. Please be wait. Everything's gone to plan. Who's this? This is the one you're supposed to let run off and live. Well, who did we just let go then? How's the money situation? He's injured, he's on foot, we'll get him back. Don't shoot! We know this space is empty! All we have to do is keep the chips safe and hidden for long enough. How many rounds we've got? So yeah, tonight on uh, on on Nerdly Out Loud, um, the official podcast of Nerdly.co.uk, I am joined by a good old friend of mine. If you've listened to the Three Six Five podcast and everything like that, you will have seen Tom many a time. We have spoken, pff, I don't know how many times now. You got to be one of the most frequent guests. But you know, like check out the new digs, man. This is the Nerdly Digs. How, how, yeah. how are you tonight? <laughs> I'm liking the nerdly digs, man. Yeah, I think I don't know. Maybe, maybe we've done like is this our like fifth or sixth podcast together? I'm trying to think. I've done I've done so so 400 bullets that we're here to talk about tonight is my sixth movie. So this must be yeah podcast number six probably. And, and to <laughs> think it all it all started when I I got a chance to see Pandora. I've told this I've told this story countless times. I'm not going to yeah. tell it again. But, um, back, no, but back I mean, when I was doing. Uh, it's not. It's nice when you've got like you know, as a you know, in a weird way, you know, as a filmmaker, when you've got your your people that you can rely on, you know, when the movie's coming out, and you know, you know, there's like a those those same group of people are going to come, and you know, they'll be there to support what you're doing. It's it's like a nice it's like a nice comfort blanket, you know. It uh, makes you feel better about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. It definitely helps. It helps as well when you when you're churning out the content. You are man. You've been. You know, this is like this is the sixth movie that we're going to sit down and talk about. But I mean, you've made like what seven, eight, twelve, yes. twenty movies. <laughs> so we've, I've just, I've literally just wrapped. Um, well, mostly wrapped. I say there is still a bit of filming left to do, but I've just finished number eight. Uh, seven is in the bag, ready to go. Um, a horror thriller called The Salient, which is out. The trailer's out there. You can see that. Mm. That's coming early twenty twenty two. 
And yeah, and I'm I'm currently balls deep on pre-production for number nine, so which we start shooting this side of Christmas. And and just for a little bit of reference for people who maybe are meeting you for the first time, maybe catching catching this for the first time. When did you make Pandorica again? Uh, okay, so Pandorica we shot. Uh, we started shooting it at the end of September 2015. I think we wrapped early October. So, yeah, it's been it's been a mad six years. You know, it just uh, you know every year I go right. I'm going to slow down, and then it actually <laughs> I ended up doing one more movie than the previous year. And you know, I can't. I mean, look, I'm so fortunate and lucky to to get to do this for a living, and that people keep believing in in me and and funding the projects and that you know distributors keep wanting to put them out there and i don't know man i just feel very very blessed you know hashtag blessed isn't it it's, it's what... <laughs> don't stick a hashtag on it you know, you know i'm not about that life you know? <laughs> but no, it, it was really cool because um obviously when when you you messaged and everything uh, 400 bullets is getting its uk release and everything so i, I was quite excited about that but I did start and I posted it on Instagram and, and Facebook and everything. And it's like, damn, you know, going from Pandora at the red with the black site to stairs or the ascent or, you know, and it's just like, you've had a cracking little career already and, and I'm, and I'm loving it. And now you've built your own little studio with, with Mr. Steve Mosley, who of course we'll talk about in a, in a quick hot minute, but you must just be like, man, just sit back every now and then and have a look at it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's honestly, it's honestly amazing, uh, you know, to, like, it's, I mean, I'm, I don't have a degree in film, you know, I'm, I'm genuinely that, that kid that was like, oh, I can do this anyway, you know, and, um, <laughs> you know, so to, to, for it to actually have worked, uh, you know, and, and I'm out there still doing this and, and you know, it, it's funny because I'm one of these people, I'm always coming up with real random ideas and there used to be a time where they would just go onto the computer and sit there, but nowadays it tends to be i come up with an idea and then I'm, I'm on set shooting it like three or four <laughs> months later um but yeah i mean it's 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 it, you know and even this month alone is like an amazing month for, for me in the sense that you know 400 bullets has come out in the uk or will be coming out um uh, g lock is premiering on horror channel on the 17th of september as well so that's getting into uk broadcast and you know these are all movies that have done well internationally it, it's weird right like my movies seem to do much better internationally especially on uh, you know on the other side of the pond the americans yeah. seem to really like what i do and they they tend to do really well in japan and 400 bullets was a massive hit in nigeria which was pretty <laughs> bizarre uh but yeah massive massive hit over there um so you know it's kind of it's always nice when they actually come out on home soil you know my friends yeah. and family and the fan base that you know have been with me since Pandora started when they actually get to see it but it, it, it seems to be that UK is like the last market that gets my films these days I don't know why it's weird save, save the best for last man yeah save exactly best. that's what that's what I'm going with but but of course um it's been a it's been a random little time as of late in the in the, the big wide world and while most people were I know you said during lockdown and everything you've had a bit of time to sort of uh, sit back and have a think and everything but let's be honest first lockdown you did a virtual reality screening of the ascent <laughs> which was great. awesome you did post and released um g lock which you know awesome you've now got 400 bullets hitting you pissed off to the caribbean to make the assailant you know like even uh, when tom uh, payton's having even <laughs> tom payton's having a quiet time He's still grinding. What the hell, man? <laughs> there was a quiet. There was a little quiet patch from the end of August that ran like till about. This, no, well, I mean, it was like it kind of went August to December, early December, where I was, you know, I had no post to do. There was nothing to premiere. Um, you know, everything. You know, G Lock had released in the US last summer. Um, you know, there was. I think it came out here in October, so there was like a couple of days of like I had to do some UK promo, but. You know, that, that that was like the first five month window in like five years where I was like, okay, well, I can do some stuff I want to do. Um, turns out what I wanted to do was write more scripts. So I just <laughs> doing that uh, you know, but yeah, it was good. I did a bit of self improvement, you know. Uh, yeah. I started meditating quite a lot, which is probably the most douchey director thing I could have adopted at this stage. But hey, 
so I found it. I found it good for me. Uh, went started going to the gym, and I don't know. Just yeah, just took, did a little bit of uh, inward inward looking for a few months, and then got back to the grind this year. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. So I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about four hundred bullets because that's what we're here for. Sure. Um, this was I genuinely like when when you you sent me like a little rough cut at one point of four hundred bullets. And, yeah. And I was in love with it from from then. I just thought you know because a while back I think it was after I saw Night Shooters and I got in touch with you. I was like, dude, you have got to work with John Bolly. Like yeah. this kid, like just blows me away like night shooters was awesome uh jailbreak the the one he made like i the love Cambodian that film, yeah yeah and i'm and i'm saying to you dude like you've got to work with this and it's like well kev just keep those eyes peeled keep those eyes peeled well jp hit my radar because of, i obviously made a few things with uh samantha schnitzer you know black site yeah, and yeah. Sent, and she she was bigging him up and then you know i think you you'd mentioned him a couple of times as well and I was cooking this Gurkha project at the time, you know, the idea was to do like um, assault on Precinct 13, but with a mm -hmm. Gurkha soldier, you know, and, and, you know, I've always been fascinated with the Gurkhas, as, you know, in terms of like a, a you know, a, you know, this sort of fearless soldier, it's almost like mythological, it's like straight out yeah. of Sparta or, you know, um, you know, the way these guys are trained and I was, I was always, it's, toying with the idea of doing something you know and we went and spoke to a bunch of gurkhas and we're like you know what because no one's no one made a movie with a gurkha as a lead ever no. and i couldn't i couldn't really wrap my head around it and so you know we decided to actually talk to a bunch of gurkhas and be like look you know if someone was going to do a movie about you guys like what do you want to what would you want to see and um you know it tend to be the a variation of the same answer but they were basically like like we just want our own rambo and I was like, yeah, I, I can do that. I can do Ram I can do Gurkha Rambo. And um, so then it became like finding somebody to take on that role. And, you know, obviously origin the initial approach to it was look, let's go out and we'll find a we'll find a Gurkha. We'll find someone from the you know, with a Nepalese background to to mm -hmm. to make this work. And um you know, it's just a part of the casting process where, you know, that that casting pool is so tiny. You know, to find someone who can act, who has the martial arts skills, who has the training, that can hold a movie down. It just, it, it became like, okay, this is untenable. We can't, we can't make the film if we go this route, you know, and that would be a shame. And so, you know, we kind of, we did all our due diligence and again, went back and spoke to a lot of, a lot of former Gurkhas and, you know, how would you feel if we cast somebody who wasn't Nepalese and, yeah, it seemed, it seemed to be that people were fine with it as long as we stuck to the spirit of what being a Gurkha was and we were respectful to, you know, to, you know, that particular culture. Um, so we, you know, we, we kind of were able to put the cast in that out forever. And that's when it became apparent that, you know, JP was the right guy for the part because he just, it, you know, although he's, you know, he's cambodian chinese or you know origins i believe sorry jp if i got that wrong i feel, I feel like we had that convo um you know he's got this you know real honorable loyal personality and he just really threw himself into the part and really kind of embodied what it would mean to be a gurkha and uh yeah i think he's i think he's i think he smashed it i love jp <laughs> i absolutely love that guy and and you did um, you I think we've already spoken about this once before in um, in Facebook chats kind of thing and everything and and you did this really interesting thing with JP that I kind of thought watching this movie this guy's just going to be the one that comes out the gate starts kicking ass starts absolutely destroying everyone and you do this this wonderful sort of slow play with the character and you're sort of like is he going to start kicking ass? Is he going to get to there? Like, we know everyone's afraid of him, but why are they afraid of him? <laughs> it's kind of like... Yeah, don't get me wrong, man. There was part, there was times when I was doing that where I was like, have I made a mistake here not unleashing JP straight off no. the bat, you know? And I, I think, you know, one of the interesting things, I, I, well, for me anyway, like as a filmmaker, you know, I'm, I, I think anybody that's watched you know, JP or followed his career, like that guy can kick ass. You know he yeah. can kick ass. Like it's it's like it's not in question, right? And so I didn't feel like as a as a filmmaker, I could really bring anything else to that discussion. It was like he kicks ass, that's what he does. But what I can bring to the part is, did you know how fucking good he is as an actor? Because that is something that I feel like 
maybe you know people are so focused on you know other filmmakers are so focused on his skill set i'm like but one of his greatest skill sets is he's this charismatic awesome actor and and that <laughs> i can do something with and so that was kind of where the logic to that came from and and also yeah it was this idea of taking that character on a on a journey you know like the whole the whole movie's kind of, is about you know honor and doing doing something because it's the honorable thing to do yeah. instead of for financial reasons and you know when i wrote that script it was in a weird way i was almost mirroring some stuff that was going on in my own life at the time as well because you know i was in this position where as a filmmaker i'm starting to get offered these like financially very rewarding big projects you know a, a, none that i can talk about on here but you know cool. you would know you would know you would know what they are you would go jesus god you got offered that and yeah. it's like yeah um but they all came with a caveat that it was like you got to ditch your team you know we're just taking oh. you like we don't you know uh, and like people like george burt and, and max weary that have been with me since the beginning of this you know i i just was like you know what i'm in this weird situation where it's like do i choose money or do i do something small and in-house and and do the honorable thing and make sure the people that have been with me since the beginning are also looked after financially and 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 then that in a weird way i was kind of like okay i can see how i can plug what i'm going through into this character of rana you know and he's in this situation where you know when he you know when we first meet him his job is crap and the money's bad and he's got these money issues and you know and then these bad guys show up and they offer him everything that he wants but it's dis it's dishonorable he'd have to he'd have to turn his back on the things that make him who we are and so he chooses the the other route which is to fight with nowhere played by andrew lee potts um yeah and so it was it was kind of like a, a really fun film to make for me because it was almost like i'm i'm making something that i am proud of to put out there and represent you know what the gurkhas are and what they stand for but i'm also getting to tell something that feels you know relatively personal to me at the time as well and that people who are sitting watching and listening and listening is a uh, is exactly why i love this guy as a director like just stuff like that you have carried from pandorica right through you know people have came and people have gone but you have a very core set of people within your team that don't seem to go anywhere it's unshakable and, and that's what i really like and love about the career you've had so far and the filmography you're putting out there well look man i mean the thing is you know it's like if and to any producers that listen to this it's like you know when you come and you say oh look you know what tom we saw so and so we really want you to come on board and helm this project you know it, what what's you know what you're actually saying is you like this aesthetic that i have i've captained the ship sure but yeah. you know a ship a ship needs the the right crew to make it make it operate at top function and, and you know musically you know, Max brings this awesome. sound to my movies that, you know, makes people go, well, that sort of, you know, stands out from the rest of the indie pack. And, uh, you know, aesthetically, jo what George is capable of doing with basically no money, you know, like, I'm, I'm like, if you hire me on my own, you're not really getting a Tom Payton movie without those guys. So it's pointless, you know, and also I'd be doing myself a disservice because, I would only end up looking like an idiot if I get bothered <laughs> with the wrong people. So, you know, it's 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 like half being loyal and half just saving my own bacon. <laughs> you, you you could say it's a Peyton verse. Well, uh, well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might have some plans for that name, but um, I can't tell no, you. No, 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 no. I mean, I get 10% of that. So. 10%, yeah, <laughs> management fee. <laughs> so the, the thing is as well, when when you went into 400 bullets and you did g-lock and it was like a, a production movie you had like um producers behind it and everything goldfinch i believe it was that were behind yeah. that you were rocking it on space age sets that i got to come and see and just be like holy shit tom's on the super next level here and then you kind of dialed it back a little bit with steve mosley and you built your own little studio i mean i'm saying little it's it's fucking awesome it looks awesome and then you've done 400 bullets. What was it like kind of going into G-Lock, which was a little bit more, I'm guessing, money involved, yeah. and then stepping back? I mean, look, man, filmmaking is the same. It's the same shit, no matter how much money you've got, right? Like, you know, and I've yeah. said this, I've said this on, you know, a dozen interviews before, but it's, you know, it's, it's still never changed. Doesn't matter how many <laughs> movies I'm I mean, like, we just did Assailant, which was my biggest budget movie to date. 
you know, like like real big budget, massive crew, shot in the Caribbean, big name actors, you know, but it's no different from 400 Bullets in the sense that it's like you get up in the morning, there's 50,000 yeah. problems uh, and you have to fix them pragmatically and you have to not, you know, throw your toys out the pram because ultimately it's it's your fault there are problems because you said you wanted to make a movie and that's it you know that's the reality of filmmaking it's you know you can be um you can be a tyrant and you can you know let people have a crappy day at work or you can go you know what i've got what i've got to play with this is the situation that i'm in and you know as long as i find a way to get that story on screen then that's the important thing to to, to be focusing on and so yeah you know I, I don't necessarily think having bigger budgets in my experience anyway, it's, it's, it's not felt any different. Do you know what feels different is I might have somewhere to go and sit at lunch, but I still, opt. <laughs> you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've, you know, I've, I've done eight movies now and I've never sat in a director's chair in my life. I don't have one. I never would, you know, um, cause I just think, well, you know, there's a mentality to the way I make movies, which is to just, you know, just get in there and get my hands dirty. And so I think, I think they'll all, all my stuff will always have that indie-esque feel to it. Um, and there's this thing going around at the moment, you know, keep getting asked it in a bunch. I just did a couple of interviews last week for, for this coming out and one for G-Lock. And yeah, and they keep I keep getting called the next Roger Corman, uh, you know, and I know that that started out like this insult. Like the first journalist that said that was, was trying to insult me, but... It was actually the biggest compliment ever because it was Roger Corman's autobiography that gave me the idea to do this crazy shit in the first place. So I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, I'm, I'm ha I'll happily be that guy, you know. Like, if it's, I, I expect I'll, I'll have 150 movies in uh, uh, on IMDb in my credits by the time I'm 90, just like he has. I'm all right with that. That's that's not a, yeah, that's not an insult. <laughs> no. I mean, every, you know what? It's it's it, it's kind of because I think you know the you know the the indie film scene in the UK. It's you know it's um it's very geared towards the sort of more highbrow art house side of things. You know, if you're not telling you know highbrow dramas with a socio political edge, then it's frowned upon. You know, you you're not a proper filmmaker. You're you you know. Whereas, I. I'm just doing my own thing and I couldn't really give a rat's ass in that sense. You know, I, I like the films I make are the kind of movies I would watch uh, on a Friday night. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm into my art house stuff and I might dabble in that one day, but, uh, you know, only when I feel like it and not because a bunch of critics are calling me Roger Corman. I'm like, that's a fucking great thing to get called. Cheers for that. I take it like I worked for the Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not saying might have done. <laughs> so, so 400 bullets, right? You, you've, you've done sci-fi. You've done um, thriller, horror in the woods with vampires and whatnot. Yeah. You are. This, this is a straight up kind of balls to the walls action with heart. Well, I mean, look, you know, I said it, you know, earlier, but my, one of my favorite movies growing up was uh assault on precinct 13 the original I, lo I loved it uh you know and I, I just love this sort of no nonsense approach to it because it, it has these like horror elements to it but it's not it's basically a straight action movie yeah. um and and one of the things i always admired about that film which i ne i'd never actually got to do in my own movies was you know we uh, you, you we all understand what, what a police station does and we all understand <laughs> what a gang does, right? Like, so there's no world building to be done. It's just, here are the police officers, here are the prisoners, here's a gang that are gonna try and break in, right? And it was like, okay, I really wanna take that approach and, and do a movie where I don't have to spend the first 25 minutes setting the world up and establishing <laughs> the rules. And, and it was so nice to just be like, here is a soldier, <laughs> here is a Gurkha. <laughs> there, oh, and some Taliban have arrived, okay, cool. You know, um, and obviously when we made the movie in December 2019, we, you know, we couldn't have foreseen what was going to happen, you know, in Afghanistan at the moment. So, you know, the fact the movie's coming out now is this sort of bizarre timing where you're like, okay, <laughs> well, it is what it is. Let's go for it. Surely that just helps though. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's terrible what's happening over there, and I feel so sorry for the for the yeah, people. Yeah, of course. But, you know, I mean, when we set out to make a 
like a fun action movie in a climate that was very different. Um, yeah. You know, and, I, and I, I feel like we succeeded. You know, I think the movie is what I wanted it to be, which is this little little siege movie on a on a small base with a kick ass hero. And you know, I got to make my assault on Precinct Thirteen, and I'll always be real real happy about that. So I want to talk a little bit. Um, obviously, you have your core set of guys coming back and helping you out and everything. You've got George Burt on, on hand and everything, doing just amazing work as he always does. Bloody George. <laughs> hey, that guy's so talented. But um, <laughs> you, you do have almost a new collection of actors here as well. How did you come about getting these guys together? Because it's a host of guys that and, and girls that, you know and, and you've seen around and you've seen in many different films like how did these this cast come together for you well it was a combination of um you know over the years obviously you know i've been kind of using this repertoire of actors and you know it's, it's it really that was that was because you know i was as a filmmaker going well you know i'd, I'd cast somebody in a movie and then i'd think oh i can do more with them and so i'd write them apart in the next one <laughs> And I think, you know, we got to this point as a, as a group where it was like a lot of them have all started blowing up and doing their own thing. And, you know, and I was like, OK, mate, what happened along the way is we'd met a load of other people who were interesting. But, you know, I was busy focusing on these guys. And, <laughs> and then so a lot of them joined the project. And then, you know, it was a mix. It was a combination of that. And uh, Michelle Holmes uh, was who was our casting agent on this. Just a genuinely lovely woman. Used to be a, a fairly well-known agent on the scene. And, um, you know, and she came on board and she filled all the gaps in and just helped us really build a, a group of people who, I think, feel authentic. You know, they feel like people who belong in that those parts. Um, Andrew Lee Potts came about real randomly. You know, we were originally I was going to get Casper uh, Van Dien, who from who'd been in G Lock, and you know, but he, we just couldn't make it work. His times couldn't just, line up. Just, was, just pick that name up, Tom. Just pick that name up. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, fortunately, I got to work with Casper on Assailant. You know, and I, I personally think I'm a massive Starship Troopers fan, but I think that what what me and Casper just did on Assailant is, in my opinion, his best performance he's ever given. I mean, he's so good. In, he's so good in Assailant. It's crazy. Um, uh, but yeah, what happened was, you know, I was at um, Sci-Fi Weekender uh, because I was picking up an award that those guys had very kindly given me. Um, and I was just sitting on this table and Andrew was there and we got chatting and... I was like, maybe this guy, maybe this guy could do it, you know, and it was, I liked the idea of casting him completely against type, you know, he's this sort of known for being the, you know, the comedic sort of, uh, you know, outlet for things like Primeval and, and Hatter and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I just felt like, oh, that would be really interesting if I took Andrew Lee Potts and turned him into a <laughs> badass soldier. Like, people won't see that coming, uh, you know, and credit to Andrew because he, completely threw himself out and he shaved his head, you know, which was a big deal for him. You know, he's known for those, those oh, lots yeah. of his. And so, Absolutely. you know, hair, hair was gone and he threw himself in the fight scenes. He threw himself at the stunts. You know, it was a um, real pleasure to work with him. And, you know, we kind of found that character together because, you know, he had he had some jokes on the page. Um, you know, and then Andrew would, would want to put more in and we would kind of go, you know, He'd almost get annoyed with me, I think. I'd be like, no, nope, we're going to rein it in. We're going to keep you on this side of the line, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And then every now and then he'd add a joke. I'd be like, yeah, that was great. Like, we're going to keep that, um, you know. And I think what you get is this genuinely unique performance in, in his um, on it, you know, in his list of credits, if you will, which sort of stands out and, and shows this total different side to him. So I, I hopefully will be, we'll be seeing him in a few more action movies. So I think he just proved he can do it. Oh, definitely. This this is um, there are a lot of Andrew Lee Potts fans out there, uh, obviously because uh, Primeval and shows like that. But yeah. this is an extremely different side to Andrew Lee Potts that you see in this movie. Yeah, and that was one of those ones going into this movie. I know it's one of your movies, and I'll always give you the benefit of the doubt. I always will. But that was one of those casting choices that I was kind of like, oh, how's this going to play out? And and it worked. Well, the thing is that that was like an interesting thing for me because it was the first time I'd found, I, you know, I'd worked with somebody who's, like you say, he's got a big fan base and, you know, we, you know, I, I, and I'd purposely cast him against type, right? 
and it kind of, and that got me thinking about assailant and you know we did the same again like casper and casper van Dien is this like all american hero he's known for being the hero you know and so in this movie in assailant he's playing this complete and utter psychopath you know and we made him strim down he's lost so much weight for the part and you know just for, he just plays this completely unhinged lunatic you know and like you've never seen casper play anything like this and and like i say i mean just like you know andrew in 400 bullets i think that will be a, another role people will go oh i didn't see that coming so maybe that's my thing now maybe i'm gonna be maybe i'm gonna <laughs> go out and try and find people to cast against type I like that. I like that. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. One, it's fun. It is. Of course it is. Um, one, one of the roles that I absolutely love in the movie, and um, I've watched it a couple of times now, and obviously is James Warren as Bartlett. I yeah. just, I, oh, you want to talk about a world-class dick bag in a movie, James Warren is a world-class dick bag in this movie. And... How how did he come about for, for you in this film? Was it just another case of you'd kind of spoken to him before and he was interested? Yeah, he, he'd done some work with the stunt team, Spencer and Darren, and, um, you know, they put him forward for it. And, you know, we knew that he had this sort of background in Guy Ritchie movies, that he'd done a bunch yeah. of stuff with him. And so, you know, that it kind of made him an interesting ch choice because it was like taking a Guy Ritchie character and plugging him into that part, if you will. Um but no, I, I love I love what uh, James did with that part. You know, it's um, re it was real gratifying for me to to watch that come to life because you know, like this kind of movie, if you've got a crappy villain, then the film doesn't really hold. And you know, it was it, it's it's a very quick movie in terms of pace. Like it's like it's going on fast, so you don't get a lot of beats to really get to know uh bartlett as a character but then he has this big defining moment where he sits down oh. with with jp's oh. character rano and you know and in this one speech i was like okay i need an actor who in 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 a five minute scene can, and you know and i think we got real lucky we, with james because he's the guy like in that five minute window you go you know what i, I think i agree with the bad guy you know i still yeah. want to see him get his ass kicked but i agree with him. <laughs> He absolutely, and and I know that, like, I've been following your filmography, I've been following your career, I know that you like to to write talky talk dialogue, but in the right yeah. place, and and he absolutely smashes that, that that scene you're on about, he smashes, and I was kind of just like, that's Tom Payton, that's where he lives. You know, I, I feel <laughs> like I'm getting better as a writer, you know, I mean, and it's a, it was a fair critique that was levelled at me in the, you know, the earlier movies. So I could be too talky, um, you know, which is I completely understood. But, you know, I feel like as I've kind of grown as a filmmaker and started to refine stuff, you know, I found the places to put those talky talky moments. And yeah, there's that that one in 400 bullets just for me is like one of the, one of the, my most favorite things I've ever written. And certainly one of my most favorite things I've seen an actor perform. So yeah, massive thanks to James for pulling that off. Two very boring minutes later. Awesome. I didn't realize, you, I didn't realize you'd cut out, so. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm not, I'm not gonna keep you too much longer anyway, but um, Really, we were just here to to promote 400 Bullets a little bit more. And um, one, one of the things that I really wanted to get into a little bit, at least, is the the collaboration between you and Steve Mosley. It's, it's been an ongoing thing, but you guys now, you've built your own studio, man. This is, this is incredible. Tell me a little bit more about that. I mean, look, Steve's just a really great guy and he, you know, really believed in the ascent and in this project and uh you know has this incredible space that he's he's built for, for us to do bits and pieces in and um you know i think everything that went on with covid it kind of yeah. put that into a bit of a freezer situation um yeah. which is completely understandable the whole bloody world guys basically so uh you know but i mean i'll he will absolutely me and steve will be doing lots more stuff together he's uh he's just a he's just a great guy i mean there's not many people on on the planet where i can say you know what i i haven't got a bad word to say about this human he's he's loyal to a fault and he's one of the most hard-working guys you know like he the the stuff i learned about work ethic from working with him you know it's just you know yeah, he's a guy. The guy blows my mind. He's just a complete legend. So if you're listening, Steve, thanks, thank you for everything, man. But I couldn't be more grateful. 
Uh, and of course, he gets a he gets a cheeky little cameo in Four Hundred Bullets. He does, yeah, yeah. He's got um, he, he's actually got a, a, a couple. We have him on um, on one of the vans early on. He's he's inside, but yeah, he gets a full on he gets a full on little moment where he's playing a paramedic at the end, and that was kind of a cool moment on set because you know we didn't didn't tell him to do it. You know, on the day I was like, oh, you got to go to to wardrobe now, and he's like, oh, here we go. <laughs> so, oh. But, but you know, Steve is ex-military, right? Like his background, he's ex-military, and you know, he in, in a lot of respects, you know, he acted as a you know a bit of a military advisor to me when we we're putting the film together. You know, you know, in all aspects, really of it. You know, and obviously all the equipment that's in the movie, all the tanks and trucks and stuff. Mm. You know, they're 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 his, and his knowledge on each of them is ludicrous. I mean, the guy. The guy's just a fan of knowledge to have around on a military movie. It was it was real it was real nice to stick him up there and immortalize immortalize him on screen, if you will, now so I did love that because obviously um Chris and I came down to, to see stairs or the ascent and yeah. um, being made and all that. And it was it was quite funny because when we were watching 400 bullets and he pops up at the end, I was like, I remember that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the place changed so much since you know when we shot uh, the ascent there, it was a big potato field basically and <laughs> You know, and then now, you know, when you see what what you see, four hundred bullets, and he's built this giant, you know, sand stage hangar, and we built the sets in it, and you know, it's like it's like you wouldn't think it's the same place, and you know, the fact that you know we we managed to double Coventry for Afghanistan, <laughs> believe believably as well, you know, it's kind of mind blowing. So um, yeah, I mean, look, I'll always be eternally grateful to Steve and everything he's done for me and continues to do for me, and you know, I think. Um, it, more than just a work thing, you know, I, I, I see him as a as a genuine friend and somebody I really look up to and admire. So awesome, awesome man, awesome. And then um, and then moving forward, so the, the movie is out, I believe you said it was tomorrow. I thought it was today, but it's tomorrow. It's gonna to be on Amazon Prime and all the Yeah, you can, yeah, you can on Amazon for the first week and it's everywhere else after that. Uh you know, Sky, iTunes, Google Play, all that all that jazz. Um uh if you're in America, it's 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 out on Blu-ray and DVD with you guys. Most of Europe has got it now, Asia has got it. Uh, Japan, uh, Korea, so yeah, it, it, pretty much us is all that's left, really. So we, yeah, we're uh, <laughs> coming out, coming out tomorrow. Amazing, amazing. Do do me a favor though, because uh, nobody can sell a Tom Payton movie quite like Tom Payton himself, and give everyone the elevator pitch for Four Hundred Bullets and why they should watch this awesome, awesome actioner. Four Hundred Bullets is the story of a Gurkha called Rana who's having some financial difficulties. One night he's just minding his own business when a, a, another soldier with a bullet wound comes running in, carrying some missile chips, um, being chased by a rogue squad who've also partnered with the Taliban. And they all want these missile chips so they can sell sell these missiles on the black market that are useless without them. And, you know, and Rana has to decide between money and honor and whether he's going to help this guy survive the night or not. And uh, Obviously, he does the right thing, and you get a lot of carnage, a lot of bang for your bang for your buck. So, if you've got a Friday night to kill and a six pack of beers and a pizza in the in the freezer, Four Hundred Bullets is the movie to 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 put them with. That's a that's a pitch and a half. Um, <laughs> one one question I do have is, is um, when are we getting Four Hundred and One Bullets, and <laughs> w- will we be getting Justice for Gage? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that guy, by the way, Thomas Smart, the actor who plays that character, <laughs> love that guy. I mean, he makes such a big impression, even though he's in the movie for like twenty minutes. But um, yeah, I, I have. I mean, I would love to do more with with Rana and Noah. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of this classic buddy cop scenario, but you know, kind of transformed into a military film. And yeah, we, we kind of had some ideas, you know. Um, I, th- I think the you know the idea for the next one was we'd use the num- we'd all use the number four hundred, but <laughs> with something so instead of four hundred bullets it'll be four hundred something else you know dalmatians uh, yeah four hundred dalmatians <laughs> it's, it's, it's Rana and Noah looking after dalmatians for a weekend <laughs> no no but I mean it'll be like you know like um you know like four. 400 people attacking a base or yeah. something like that, you know, and, and our guys have to 
you know, kind of reteam and stuff. But there's a, you know, there's quite a few different ideas for plots for where we could take those characters. And you know, if this movie continues to gain traction and it finds its foot in, then I, I know it's something Steve would love to do, and I'd love to do more of them as well. So yeah, watch this space. Awesome, awesome, man. Definitely, definitely, and and you're right as well because when you when you start watching Four Hundred Bullets, you do have these completely different characters, completely different guys, and even I, the last time I watched it was kind of as you've just said, the buddy cop thing. Kind of towards the end of the movie, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, and of course you get that scene at the end when he's like, "You're not going to kiss me, are you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that was that, that was an ad lib from Andrew actually. He'd, um, that, that's a totally he'd, he'd actually try he tried to put that in the movie in like other places, <laughs> and I was like, "No, no, I know where that should go." Um, but yeah, that, that was that was actually his idea that one. That's definitely one of those scenes where you know. Um, did you ever see Loaded Weapon with Emilio and Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah. And at, the yeah. End, <laughs> at the end, they go sequel. That's definitely <laughs> one of those moments. Well, that's what we were trying to do. You know, I wanted to just do that. You know, yeah, that lethal <laughs> weapon rush hour vibe, but in a military <laughs> in a military action film. And those two, you know, like Andrew and and JP, they really get on. They've got actual chemistry with each other. They. They come across like two guys that you wanna you wanna see do more stuff. You wanna hang out with them a bit more. Yeah. I think. Brilliant, man. So we're we're gonna we're gonna start wrap now, and we've cool. kind of we've kind of already talked a little bit about what else you've been doing. But um, what what is there, is there anything that you can actually talk about that you're super excited to, to for people to get on board and see? Well, G G Lock is coming out September seventeenth um, on Horror in the UK. So if you're here, you can catch that nine pm Saturday the seventeenth. Um, then yeah, Salem, I'm real proud of. You know, it's um, if you were uh, if you liked Redwood, then you're gonna like a Salem. Like it's like a like a spiritual successor to that. You know, it's about a couple. It's about a couple who go. Um, the Caribbean on a hiking holiday to try to save their marriage because um, the, the marriage council isn't, isn't working for them and they invite uh, Casper Van Dien's character Michael to dinner randomly in a bar because he seems like a nice guy um, and it turns out he's a complete lunatic and he he chases them across this hiking trail uh, punishing the couple killing anybody that they ask for help uh you know and in a weird way he sort of becomes like a better marriage counselor because they're forced to work together now and remember why they were a good team in the first place so if you liked redwood i think you're really going to like assailant and you know i'm very proud of that movie and uh, and yeah like i say i've got um, something else that we've mostly shot got a bit got to pick up uh, which will probably happen next year um and then yeah and then i'm i'm off to do another thriller horror with uh which i can't say too much about but it's you know working with msr and back out in the caribbean um and then yeah and then and then hopefully when 2022 kicks back in you'll see more more stuff with uh me and steve and the gang all back together so hopefully maybe 400 bullets too you know oh amazing amazing and you, you had me sold on a sailor obviously like uh, I, I like a little bit of uh casper van Dien, as you know but you've added yet another uh, like a, a lost fan that I am seeing Lapidus in there. Yeah, <laughs> Come yeah, on, it's a Je yeah, Jeff Hayes in the movie. Yeah. You know Come the on. irony. Well, the irony of being on a Caribbean island exactly, with the captain, who, with the captain who crashed the plane in Lost. I was like, this, this boat doesn't bode well, does it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, Jeff. Jeff was great, and he's really good in the movie. And, you know, I, it was cool for me to put the, you know, I was a big Lost fan. Mm. Um, you know, it was good. To, it was cool for me to put the captain from Lost as the captain for my boat in, in Assailant. So that was like a real big nerd moment for me that I really loved. It, it kind of feels like sometimes when, you, when you're making your movies, and I know it's not the case, but it sometimes feels like when you're making your movies, it's like, Kev, who do you want me to cast? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what? It's funny because I think you know, we've got obviously got very similar tastes. I think mm. you know my I'm not you know it's, I'm not one of these people. My background isn't oh I you know there's a lot of filmmakers that pretend to be into into geek culture and nerd culture. You know they they pretend they're into that stuff, but like you know I actually am obsessed with it. You know, I, I growing up, you know, things like Lost and Buffy, uh, you know, Supernatural. I've been mean, stuck with that show for fifteen years. I just, I just refused to give up. I was like, no, I'm gonna follow it to its end. 
Uh, it doesn't you know, matter how bad it gets, I'm sticking with it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it had, its, it had its highs and lows, admittedly, some some more lows towards the end. But, you know, I kind of, you know, and I'm very into, you know, I'm really into my anime stuff as well, you know, and, and all of this stuff kind of infuses it. And then when we're casting, you know, I'm very lucky now to be in this situation where I can cast people that I've loved growing up and, you know, some of them, you know, if, it, you know, they're not necessarily mainstream actors, but I know that mm. for me as a fan, I would freak out seeing that guy. And then it means that people like yourself will as well. And that that's important to me. Exactly, man. Exactly. So, Tom, this has been absolutely amazing. It's been great to speak to you again. Once again, you've been one of the, the frequent guests on my shows and podcasts and whatnot. And any time sitting chatting to you is a pleasure. So, uh, well, listen, man, I'm hopefully I'll come back again when Assailant drops next year and uh, we'll do it all pretty, over again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you will. <laughs> we, keep, we keep talking about just doing like a geek out episode. I think we just need to get hey, that done. I mean, listen, I've been, to I've been toying with doing a podcast, you know, just because I enjoy like chatting to people like you. I was thinking of doing this podcast where I get all the people that I've worked with on them. The, the, the idea is just going to be uh, they can pick the subject. What something they never get to talk about that they want to talk about? Like there you go, let's get Stephen Moyer or Casper Van Dien on, and they can just. So you know, if I do, then you'll have to come on, and we'll do we'll do we'll do a reverse of this. You you don't want to go down that path, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> right, my man. Right, I'm gonna. Right, you bro. Again, um, 400 bullets hits uh, hits digital download. Uh, everywhere tomorrow it's already out in in other countries but it finally comes to the uk shores tomorrow and uh, i hope everybody does check it out i'll be posting trailers and i'll be doing everything i can and we'll get people watching this movie because i need a uh, 401 bullets <laughs> well listen thanks to everybody supporting the movie and uh, thanks for having me on the show man i really appreciate it There's no need for any more violence. Please wait. Everything's gone to plan. Who's this? This is the one you're supposed to let run off and live. Well, who did we just let go then? How's the money situation? He's injured, he's on foot. We'll get him back. Don't shoot! We know this space is empty! All we have to do is keep the chips safe and hidden for long enough. How many rounds we got? You're about to die in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we know. <laughs>